sheep will hear my voice. Now tell me who decides whether or not you're one of Christ's sheep? Christ. You do. That's your choice. God does not arbitrarily say, well, I'll pick that one. I don't want that one. You decide yourself whether you want to be one of Christ's sheep. Amen. When you choose to follow Jesus, you're choosing to be one of his sheep. When you refuse to follow Christ and his leading in your life, then you are choosing not to be one of his sheep. It's your choice. <coughs> now my question for you is this. Have you heard the voice of the Good Shepherd? After picturing all those fallen churches in Revelation 17, calling them Babylon, there is a message from heaven from the Good Shepherd himself. Revelation 18, verse 4. Come out of her, that's Babylon, <clears throat> confusion, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. God calls his people to come out of Babylon. That's the call of the Good Shepherd. And we have been happy here at our seminar to see those who have responded to the call of the Good Shepherd. As you come into the church, you join the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Sometimes people who come in the church are disappointed in what they find. They come in the church, they come into the sheepfold, <clears throat> and they find that, well, not all the sheep are friendly. <laughs> they look around, they say, oh, look at that, Pastor. Here's a sheep that looks like they're sick. What is this, a sheep hospital? I thought this was a sanctuary for saints. They got sick sheep in here. Some people look around and they say, Pastor, look at that sheep. Look like they died. What is this, a sheep mortuary or something? They got dead sheep in here. Other people look around and they say, Pastor, look what that sheep is eating. Look what that sheep is drinking. I thought the sheep manual says you're not supposed to eat that stuff. Other people, they look around and they say, Look, Pastor, look what that sheep is wearing. That stuff hanging out of their ears. I thought the sheep manual says you're not supposed to wear that. And pastor, I don't like the way that sheep looks at me. It gives me the evil eye. <laughs> Here's my counsel for you, friend. Don't follow the sheep. Follow, follow the, the shepherd. shepherd. Yeah. If you follow the sheep, you may be disappointed. You may be led astray. But if you follow the shepherd, you're safe. Yeah. God has a true church. Not everybody in the church is a saint. And there are some goats even in the fold. Amen. God's church is a washing machine. In the washing machine, listen, in the washing machine, the church, you find yourself surrounded by dirty laundry. <laughs> Here is that high class shirt that thinks so highly of himself, gets a little dirt on him, so he gets put in the washing machine. And he feels the soap and the suds cutting away at the dirt. And then there's the, you know, the agitation. Some of these washing machines, they go one way, then they go the other way. Some of these other washing machines, they got this thing in the middle. It's called an agitator. Every church has one. <laughs> Amen. Some churches have these dual action agitators. <laughs> So here you are in the church, this high class shirt is in the church, and he feels the effects of the washing machine, you know, one way, the other way, and then the agitation, and the soap, not a very pleasant experience, and then the shirt finds itself all tangled up with these dirty pants, and the shirt says, ooh, how did you get in here? I didn't think they put stuff like you in here, if you're in here, I'm not staying, I'm getting out of here shirt crawls out of the washing machine. You understand my point, right? Stay in the washing machine, the church, and let God clean you up. Amen. Listen, someday God himself is going to sort the laundry. Amen. And when God gets done sorting the laundry, I want to be on the clean pile, don't you? Amen. Don't get out of the washing machine because you don't like the other laundry. You know, there's a story in the Bible about a separation between the sheep and the goats. You can read that in Matthew 25. Do you know the difference between sheep and goats? <clears throat> How many of you have ever raised goats? All right, I see a few hands. I grew up on a little farm in Ohio, and we had 
had goats. And I learned that the goat is the most stubborn, disobedient, independent thinking animal of any animal on the family farm. When you tie up a goat, you put him on a tether, he's got one thought in mind. How can I pull up the stake? How can I chew through the rope? How can I get loose? You put a goat behind a fence, he's got one thought in mind. How can I get over the fence, under the fence, around the fence, through the fence? I want to be on the other side. You tell a goat, don't eat it, he thinks, I'm going to taste it. We'd hang up the laundry on the line. This is back in the days, you know, when we would hang laundry on the line. My mother didn't have a dryer, and so the goats went to go out. They would nibble on the clothes, chase them away. You tell a goat, don't get up on that. There they are. Jump up on top of it. Not only that, goats, they like to butt. I've gotten, when I was a little boy, I got butted many times by the goats. Do you know how you can spot a goat in the church? Here is the attitude of a goat. I know that's what the Bible says, but. <laughs> I know that's what I should do, but. <laughs> you know, that's the character of the goat. I say, if God says it, let's do it. No ifs, ands, or buts, right? Hallelujah. Stay in the washing machine. If you will follow Jesus, you're safe. Watch this. This is John 10, 27 to 29. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Follow Jesus. Don't follow the other sheep, or even those other goats. Follow Jesus. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 29, my Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. You are safe as long as you follow Jesus. Amen. Yes. You stop following Jesus, you're no longer safe. Paul says in Romans 8, 38 and 39, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's only one person that can take you out of the hands of Christ, and that's you. Amen. Your choice. Nobody else can separate you, but you can separate yourself. Jesus says, Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. If you're not yet a member of Christ's true fold, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, what is the Good Shepherd doing with you? He's guiding you. He's leading you to that one true fold, that one true church. I want to follow Jesus, don't you? Yeah. How many of you want to make the commitment to Christ today to follow Him and not the other sheep? May I see your hands? When you come in the fold... We have some new members in the fold. Sometimes you're disappointed by what you see in the other sheep. But don't look at the other sheep. Amen. Look at Jesus. Amen. Follow Jesus. There is hope for you. Just follow the shepherd's lead. There is hope for you. He will supply your every need. There is hope for you if you, his voice, obey and heed. And there is hope in Christ for you. There is hope for you. Do not become a goat in heart. There is hope for you. From their example, you must depart. There is hope for you. Follow the Good Shepherd from the start. Amen. Because there is hope in Christ for you. Amen. We want to end by singing that song we learned so well. I will follow thee, my Savior. We'll sing this song and then we will sit down and have a few other uh, items. Let's stand and sing this together.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the call of the Good Shepherd to each of our hearts. We pray you'd help us to follow him day by day, step by step, all the way into that eternal kingdom. Help us to fix our gaze on the shepherd and not be discouraged by the sheep. Bless this church, we pray, this fold, that it might be a lighthouse in this community. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated, please. Thank <laughs> you. 